Ladies and gentlemen, in this episode, you are going to hear opinions. And while the podcast is endorsed by Uriah Heep, the opinions of the host and various guests do not necessarily represent the opinions of the band or any of the members past or present. With that being said, let's celebrate the music of Uriah Heep. Welcome to Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Haskin, and we have something really cool today. We have uh, two versions of a song. The song that we're doing is Woman of the World, but the second version is actually called Does Anything Matter? And at some point, the title changed, the music changed completely. You can still feel the, the basic idea of the song in there. And, uh, and I love when we have that. I love when it's something that really shows the development from an idea that was being developed into a completely changed idea that ended up on the album. That always just excites me a little bit more. So, uh, you know, we got two songs to cover today because uh, we're going to go through both versions. So let's just get right to it. Here is Woman of the World by Uriah Heep from High and Mighty. Right off the bat, just starts out with another great riff, uh, you know, nice, uh, nice guitar sound there. Drums, I'm going to say, are still a little bit loud, especially that bass drum um, really just kind of fills up just a little too much space. I think it kind of buries some of the other dynamics that are going on a little bit. That does tend to happen with boomier instruments. But uh, overall, I really like that opening riff. And then, you know, this nice little uh, old time piano sounding part that it goes into from there. Very unexpected. Not just the uh, the sounds of it, but the notes that are being played as well. Just would not have seen that coming. <laughs> At best, you're thinking it's probably going to repeat. Maybe there's going to be a little solo over it or something. But yeah, it just goes in a completely different direction. And as we heard right at the end, we're already getting vocals like less than 20 seconds into the song. Lots of interesting changes here, especially when uh, it concerns the beat. There's also a lot of really nice dynamics that Lee Kerslake is playing here. I don't know if you can hear them. They're very subtle, uh, some very gentle uh, bounces of the stick on the snare, uh, extra bass drum hit here and there that's done uh, very quietly, but uh, very nice, solid playing, absolutely solid playing. Um, love the vocal on this. I love just that the song is kind of all over the place as far as the, the tempo map goes, but it really flows nicely, you know? We get uh, a beat and then we get something faster and then we get something that just cuts it in half. Um, really interesting how many changes there are in this song already. I mean, we're not even a minute in yet, but uh, it's got a really good feel to it, too. And I love the the uh, sort of ragtime piano feel behind the vocal and the verse. Um, I'm not sure what effect they're putting on there. It's kind of like a shimmer reverb, maybe. Um, I, I can't quite place it, but it sounds really good. I like it. It gives it a real old timey feel. Really interesting bass playing here. Um, there's there's that part that we hear in there twice where it just kind of 
plays a little bit higher in the register and then just kind of hangs there for a second, which is a very interesting technique when you're looking at an up-tempo type song. Uh, very cool either way, though. Um, just very unexpected, but it grooves. Uh, but normally, you know, when you have something that's that's like this, you're not going to stop the bass quite like that. But I like the way it just kind of gives a little burst and then hangs there for a second. That's a really interesting technique. You know, the vocals are really kind of hard to make out between the effect that we've got on them, which I think is very similar to an effect that we heard on The Magician's Birthday. Um, but in any case, they're really hard to make out between the effect and the volume level, which is is very low for the vocals at this point. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but on the website, uh, I have a, a page for every show that comes out. And on that show page, I have the lyrics to the song. So uh, if you can't make out anything, if you're... Um, undecided on what the lyrics might be, go ahead and check that out. Um, you know, I, I can't guarantee that those lyrics are 100% accurate, but everything that I went through uh, seemed right to me. But, you know, I, I'm not uh, I'm not somebody who gets the words right all the time either. So there's a, a chance that something is wrong here or there. If so, please do let me know so I can get that corrected. But uh, in any way, it, it's, uh, it's much easier to follow along sometimes with lyrics than it is just listening with your ear, especially when the vocals are a little bit in the background. So feel free to check that out on the website. Well, there's a lot of great stuff going on. I mean, you, you've got the typical great bass groove and you've got some really good drum things happening here. Um, you know, the sound is rich and full between the guitars and the keyboards and that piano. But uh, I love when they do those uh, just two different vocal lines at the same time that work so well together. You know, David's voice is really strong. And to have the, the you know, the for lack of better words, the choral section of the band singing an opposing uh, line to what he's doing is really neat. Um, they've done it a few times, and I've always praised them for it, but I like that they don't do it all the time because that's just an easy thing to fall into. You know, hey, this works. People like it. Let's put it in as many songs as possible. But that's the thing. It's kind of like effects. You know, they don't use effects a whole lot, but when they do, they're very prominent. They're very featured, but they don't burn you out on effects album after album after album. And I, I like that. I like that there's a variety of sounds. I like that there's, a, you know, well tasteful things that are in there, but nothing that's done to death. And that's a very important part of why I like this band so much. And we get to end the song fading out on the bass solo that we didn't get to hear. That's a bit of a bummer because that sounded interesting. I like that where that was going. Uh, you know, I think overall the song's really good. I like the writing of it. I like the performances. I think it suffers from a, a poor mix, to be honest. I think that if the vocals would have been a little more in the space that we typically expect vocals to be, where we can hear clearly what he's talking about and, and has that power over the music, 
uh, I think it would have worked, especially where the vocals at the end give way to the uh, to the instruments to to finish the song out in the fade. Uh, I think it would have been a much more powerful transition if the vocals were a little bit more up front. Just my opinion. Um, you know, we get what we get, and that's that. But uh, but overall, good song. Now, I think it would be nice to hear the contrast of that, hear how it was in development with the version that they were working on called Does Anything Matter? One, two, three, four. Did you ever meet the kind of lady She lives her whole life saying maybe Running here and there as she pleases I just got to stop it here for a second because we've already covered a lot of stuff. Um, we've got a completely different intro, a regular piano, no guitar, uh, just a completely different feel to it all together. The vocal is much more gentle, um, really in that space that I typically like. But uh, it, it coming off of the other song, it feels weird because uh, it, it just feels almost awkwardly gentle. But again, that's coming off the other song. If I heard this version first, I'd be like, well, this is the song. You know, this is a new song and, and you would take it and listen to it. But listening to them back to back, I think certainly has effect on on the perception of the difference between the two versions. Uh, but it's it's very lovely the way he's singing. Uh, I love when he's in that space. know what? I know what it is. I know what it is. It's getting to me. So there is a layer of piano that's just been doing this build since uh, shortly after the beginning of the song. And it kind of reminds me of something more uh, like opening a Broadway show, something more, uh, you know, long drawn out drama. And I don't really think that the song means to do that. I don't get that from the story. I don't get that from the organ or from the, you know, the way that the vocals are singing. It doesn't sound like it's supposed to have that that element to it. So I think it feels a little bit off to me. And I think that might be what I'm I'm getting out of it. I mean, certainly coupled with the fact that we just heard a completely different version of the song. And whichever one you hear first is the one that you're probably going to go, okay, this is the one. This is the one that they released. Uh, this is the one that defines the, this particular writing. So uh, anything secondary to that might suffer on a subconscious level a little bit. But really, I think that's what's throwing me off. I think it's that piano. Are you mine? Or are you woman of the world? Are you really so different from all the other girls? Do you care? Well, with the music backed off quite a bit in this version, I mean, we don't have any drums. We have a uh, bass just being played on piano. So it feels a lot more like a demo version, although sound wise, it, it really does sound complete. Uh, but I, I'm still I'm I'm missing those things that make the song groove a little bit. But this is nice in a more uh, ballady ver ballad. I don't know if that's a word, but a ballad type version of the song. Um, but I really love the way that the vocals sound without that music kind of drowning out a little bit of the harmony there. 
Uh, it's really nice to see the talent just standing out on uh, just just the organ and piano. So uh, that's a good sign for this one, at least. It gives us that option to see that that we didn't really get to see in the other version. Now, this is listed as a demo version on the deluxe CD that I'm listening with. And and it really does kind of make sense because I feel like this is really just still putting the song together. This is, hey, we've got the basic framework. We've got some words. Let's throw it down so we can kind of analyze it and, you know, play it for the, the other guys who aren't here right now and, you know, kind of get their input and then we'll build the song around it. Because I'm not personally really feeling the uh, the normal depth of emotion that I feel from David's vocals. I feel like he's searching his way through it. And, and that's fine. You know, you're, you're not just going to start working on a song and have all the elements there. It takes time to develop. And, you know, who knows how many times he'd heard it. Maybe this was only the second or third time and he's just putting the lyrics down and he's just getting them down on tape. Um, I certainly don't expect stellar performances during uh, those kind of moments. But uh, I think he was on to it. I think he he had the right framework for it. But um, yeah, it definitely explains why this is uh, listed as a demo version. Does anything matter to you? Oh, does anything at all matter to you? Does anything matter to you? So, yeah, it's nice. I mean, you can see the framework of the other song coming together. One thing I really do like about this version, though, is that you really get to hear the vocals, that they're they're featured where they should be, uh, you know, at the at the right volume level for the mix of music. But uh, yeah, it's a good song. I like it. Um, I, I'm glad that they took the uh, opportunity to take that basic version that they had and, and turn it into the final version. Um, I think it's a little more interesting, but, you know, I like the song the way it was as a demo. I like a lot of times when they just lay back and do something that doesn't need a lot of technical assistance. But having just come off the version that had a great guitar riff, some really powerful drums, a, a killer bass part, um, certainly makes this one feel a, a little bit like it's lacking. Um, but I think if I'd have just heard it on its own without knowing the other version, I probably would have liked it just fine, if that makes sense. That's just, um, you know, how I feel about things in this moment. And that's what this podcast is all about. So that's it, guys. Uh, Woman of the World with the also version of Does Anything Matter? Uh, very cool stuff. Thank you guys for hanging out for another episode of the show. We will be back tomorrow for Friday's episode. Got another dual song coming at you. Um, boy, this, this CD is just chock full of treasures. See you guys tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days.